Hi everyone, in this session I'm going to show you how I painted this um, lighthouse and the little cottage. It's in watercolour, 5 by 7 um, I started initially with a, a light pencil sketch. Um, I've speeded it up because you take took me a while. Um, and don't be afraid to erase any errors that you make. I mean, sometimes people think it has to be perfect first time. Mine wasn't. When I did the sketch, I then went over my pencil marks in a waterproof pen. Um, you can buy them. They're great for um, sketching and doodling. Um, so. As you can see, I've speeded it up a bit because it did take me a little while. So I outlined everything and then the areas that had shadow, I, I ran the pen down again just to put a bit of strength um, in there. Um, and just went over everything to see where I was going with it when we got the paints out. Right. So here we are, we're ready and we're going to start with the paints. There's my paint box, I didn't use all those colours. And my brushes, the ones I've got here are from Rosemary & Co. She makes handmade brushes in the UK, they're not as expensive as you think. It's a size 6 and a size 4, they are my go-to brushes. Um, I also use, uh, I think it's a half inch flat which you'll see later. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just lightly erasing the pencil marks that can be seen. Um, I do tend to change my drawings um, when I come to ink them in. If I think my pencil line isn't quite right, I will change it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just getting rid of those pencil marks. Give it a shake. Get the uh, residue off. And we'll be ready to go in a minute. Okay, so here's, this is the brush I'm going to use. It's a half inch soft um, brush. I'm using lots of water and French ultramarine. Now, I tend to have two jars of water, one for picking up clean water and one for rinsing off my brush. And that means that for me, I feel that the, you know, the water that I'm actually using fresh is nice and clean and hasn't got any existing paint particles in. Now the flat brush is lovely for going round um, buildings and shapes as you can see here. You can see the amount of water I've got on there because it's actually glistening at the top and it's allowing me to spread the paint over the page. I don't know why I stopped talking. It's like concentrating, isn't it? So I can concentrate. The, you'll see that these um, flat end brush is quite handy for getting into the little nooks and crannies. Um, and all this is just spreading down the paint. The colour will lighten as it dries, but um, we're going to do a little bit more to this in a moment. Right, so I think I'm happy with that. Just picking up some more paint. I've stroked it up the top there because we'll be going back up there. Just putting in the horizon line where the sea will be and moving the paint around. Now because there's plenty of water on the page, it will buckle a little bit. But I needed that because what I'm doing now is I'm lifting out some of the colour this is why I wasn't worried about spreading it around evenly. I'm lifting out the colour to create clouds. And as you can see, the colour is coming off. And to make some of the clouds even lighter, I'll use my flat brush in a moment and pick up some of that clear water and just, um, here we are, I'm doing it now, putting it in areas and wiggling my brush around. And what's that doing is it's, sort of pushing the paint that's on the page away to reveal the clear white paper underneath. Um, it, it's a sort of process that you can use for lifting off colour if you've sort of got a bit of colour in the wrong place. You can gently do it and lift that colour off. Um, sometimes it doesn't come off altogether, but it does help. So it's a great method for creating whites in clouds 
and making them nice and fluffy. So I'm just doing that here. And after this, I shall mix a little bit of that French ultramarine with some alizarin crimson to create a sort of a purpley colour, which I'm putting on underneath the base of the clouds. Because um, if you look at clouds, they all seem a bit darker at the bottom. Uh, so this is the effect I'm trying to create. Now I've just made the marks and wiggling my brush around like before to create a subtle darkness at the base of the clouds to give a little bit of shape and interest. Because the page is wet, it will actually help the paint spread a little bit better. I've just put some clear water down there, blotting it out to soften the edges again. And this one down here. and you can lift off the paint. So that's the sky done. Um, and I think I do the, the lighthouse next. Right. This I think is, is Scarlet Lake. We've got the little red top here is going to be Scarlet Lake. And I will then use that as a size um, four brush that I've got there. So it's quite fine. And I shall use this colour for the doors as well. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using clean water and just letting that red come underneath a little bit because we're, we're standing on the ground and we're looking up at the lighthouse so we can sort of see that bit underneath of that red dome. Right, I've now changed to French ultramarine with a little bit of that alizarin crimson again and I'm just stroking it down because in my in my world in my wonky world my sun is coming from the left hand side I nearly always paint like that that's just how I prefer it probably because I'm right handed I don't know um, so what I've done here is I've put the sort of bluey pink shadow in so we can see where we're going with the lighthouse the roof of the cottage I use light red with or you could use burnt sienna and that's just as good colour I think on this occasion I use light red um, and then I've dropped in some um, yellow ochre to create a bit of interest and I think that's yellow ochre with a little bit of the um, Scarlet Lake to give it sort of like a peachy colour for the building. And oh, yeah, that would be burnt sienna for the thatch, and this is the um, light red for the chimney pots. It's, it's like a terracotta colour, a little bit darker than the um, burnt sienna. I would say um, you need to make sure that your sky is completely dry before you then start to do any of this detail painting because if that paper is wet in any way um, your colours will just scoot off across the, the page. Right this is um, sap green I'm just dropping in a bit of the um, landscape there the cliff top I, as I say, I use a lot of water because I, I like to drop in other colours, like I've done here with raw umber, I think it is. And it um, then starts to spread and blend um, itself. It basically paints itself. So I just drop the colours in where I think I would like them and just let them um, bleed into each other. Um, slightly stronger mix of sap green here and some raw umber. The thing I love about watercolour is that um, it all depends on how much water you use and obviously the more water the more diluted and lighter the colour becomes and it's wonderful because you can build up layers you can you know you, you can have a really dark red and then put lots and lots of water in and it becomes the most delicate pink um, so you can do lots of with, things with it 
Um, here I'm dropping in, um, I think it's just French Ultramarine, um, in the wet paint and you can see how it's actually spreading a few little spatters and um, it creates you know, very nice interesting shapes into your um, painting. It took me a very long time to get to this style of painting. Um, you know, I've, I've been painting good for a number of years now. Um, and for those of you that might be starting out, um, it all boils down to just practice, to be honest, and finding how much water you like to use. Um, the colour of the cliff here is um, raw sienna, I think, with... Um, some red um, red sienna perhaps a uh, burnt sienna dropped in and some umber yeah to get make it look like a cliff there's the other little door going in there have been times i use my hair dryer in between this so um uh, just to speed it up for you really so i don't think you want to sit and watch paint dry Right, so that's all been dried off now. So we've got the sky and the cliff more or less done. This is the sea and I'm using um, Windsor Blue Green Shade. Um, there are two varieties. There's a red shade, which mixes well with reds and the green sh shade mixes well with blues and uh, it's really nice, it makes a lovely, you can get some really lovely greens if you mix them with yellows, you know, they make some lovely greens and reds. Yeah, so, what's coming next? Ah, oh, the path. This will be raw sienna. And I'm just putting it in a random, I'm, I'm not even going up to the edges, it's just, if you look, I'm holding my brush quite far down the um, handle. Um, it's not a long brush, it's just, you know, your standard paintbrush. But I like to have my um, brush quite free. Um, I find if I hold it too close to the hairs, you know, where that silver ferrule is there, um, I get too tight and it's almost like end up writing you know if you're writing with a biro or another pen it feels like that and I like to hold it further back and it makes for me a much more pleasant uh, painting experience and not only that it means the hairs of the brush splay out and do all sorts of things sometimes that are quite unexpected um, but they're interesting Oh yes, I had to do this again because I stuck my hand on it. Ah, <laughs> oh, note to self, make sure it's dry. <laughs> now it's dry. Right, this colour I'm using here is called Shadow. It's by um, Terry Harrison. It's one of his groups of colours. Uh, and it's one of the best colours I've found for creating um, shadows that you don't actually have to mix yourself. It's sort of a, a, a quite a... Purple. Well, it is a purple colour, but it, it looks as if it's got all sorts of other colours in it as well, and it really does work well. So I'm putting it here in the uh, building where the shadow shadows are likely to fall. And um, it works well because it's, it is a part transparent colour, so you can paint it over existing colours, and you can see the original colour still through it. So it, it's a very... Um, uh, versatile um, colour in, in my palette. Um, you could actually make it just mixing French Ultramarine with the Lism Crimson and um, perhaps a little bit of Burnt Umber, you know, until you got that sort of purpley shadowy colour. Um, yeah, that would work just as well if you, if you um, have never come across this colour. The 
colour mixing is a, a whole different ball game. <laughs> Fascinating, but um, can be very confusing. Right here, I'm just putting in the windows. Um, I'm trying to create that sort of um, sort of glazed look that you get on um, old um, windows. And there's the shadows going in from the uh, chimney pots, and underneath the thatch all the way along there I'm popping a shadow in there we're sort of slowly coming to the end in a way we're sort of at least halfway through and it's a bit now where we're starting to refine things you know and once you start putting the shadows in um, your paintings start to come to life but you need to remember the direction of the sun and as I said mine's coming from the left uh, so all my shadows have to go left to right. I remember in my early days I painted a lovely little picture and when <laughs> when my uh, art tutor looked at it he, he wanted to know where the sun was coming and I'd got shadows going all over the place. <laughs> I uh, didn't do it again. <laughs> but you live and learn. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, it's been a little while um, since I've um, posted. I haven't been too well. I had a bout of shingles on my face, which wasn't very nice. Um, that keeps reoccurring, but um, hopefully it's sorted itself out now. So it's, you know, it's sort of made me feel a bit grotty, really. But um, feeling a lot better now, and uh, I'm glad to get back painting. Um, really enjoy doing these little... Uh, videos I don't know what your views are on them I mean what sort of thing you things you like um, I try to do them so that there are they're fairly easy and straightforward because um, I I know there's many people would like to to have a go and it's not really that mysterious I think the best thing that you could do if you did want to have a go at painting is um, buy yourself a, a little pack of um, student quality watercolours and some brushes and a small sketchbook which is suitable for watercolour and just paint in the book. Uh, don't worry about the, you know, don't worry about trying to do a decent picture or painting to start with because it won't happen you've got to learn and practice is the only way to learn and you know we all make mistakes and you have to embrace those if you don't make mistakes then you, you're not doing anything in life and that's how we learn by our mistakes you never know some of your painting mistakes you might actually enjoy <laughs> right what are we doing now I'm just putting a little bit of blue across the um, glass at the top where the light is. You can't really see what I'm doing, I suppose. It's very fine. Just, just reinforcing that shadow underneath the dome. And we'll let all that dry. Oh yes, I remember this. Um, I thought I'd go in and put a shadow or reinforce the chimney pots. And what actually happened was I blobbed <laughs> some of the paint onto the sky. And what I did was I used clean water on my brush, wet the little area that I'd 
um, messed up on, uh, which you can see I'm doing, I, and I just keep dabbing it off with a tissue, and eventually it just it didn't quite disappear, but it was it was good enough so that you wouldn't see it. Well, it looks like I've put the brush away and I've got the pen back out. Um, before doing this, I made sure everything was dry, so I had my hair dryer out and just whizzed over everything to make sure um, the paper was dry, because um, to go back over it with a pen, um, you might not get the best out of the pen. This is one of the techniques I really like. Um, they sometimes call it pen and wash, or, uh, or watercolour and pen. And you just go in and you, it's a bit like doodling, you know, you go and have a little fiddle here and a little fiddle there. And, you know, it's, it's quite therapeutic, really. And some of the things, you could just put some colours on a page in random shapes get the pen out and start doodling um, with that, uh, with the pen. Um, it's great fun. I have a feeling that I'm actually fiddling here. I enjoy doing this so much, I don't really want to stop it. <laughs> oh dear. I'm gonna have to at some stage. Is it done? And yep, what well, else? I found something else, have I? Where else can I put some pen? I knew I'd find somewhere. Any more? Oh, here we go. Initial. There we go. And look at that, put a mount over it. That ah, looks all right. There we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed painting it for you. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.